Greetings. You're listening to the Department of Defense Partners in Amphibian and Reptile Conservation podcast series. The purpose of this podcast series is to feature the people, projects, and military installations that are conducting exceptional amphibian and reptile conservation, management, and research projects on DOD lands. In this episode, Naval Air Station Patuxent River biologists Jackie Smith and Rebecca Stump discuss the Diamondback Terrapin nesting surveys and protection efforts. We hope you enjoy the podcast. We can start both with your full name and titles, Jackie. Uh, my name is Jackie Smith. I'm a natural resources specialist. And my name is Rebecca Stump, and I'm also a natural resources specialist. All right. Well, um, starting with the first question, what amphibian or re reptile projects would you like to highlight to the DOD Park Network? Well, I wanna highlight our volunteer staffed, intern-led Northern Diamondback Terrapin Nesting Program. And what is the purpose or objective of this project? Our Terrapin Program had its origins in a request from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service Field Office at annual meetings in 2011 and 2012. While discussing implementation of our integrated natural resources management plans, Fish and Wildlife Service noted the terrapin decline in the Patuxent River and asked that the base conduct nest surveys at Naval Recreation Center Solomons, which is across the river from PAX. An important factor for this project is the Student Conservation Association, or SCA. It's like a temp agency for conservation efforts, placing resource assistance around the country. The PAX Natural Resources Office has worked with SEA since the mid-1990s to bring in resource assistance through cooperative agreements. These resource assistants, or interns, complete important field work that the full-time natural resources staff simply can't absorb. In 2013, we selected an SEA intern who was really interested in terrapins, and she designed the first nest surveys. Although she found just a few nests at Solomon, she discovered many more at PAX. When, we saw, when she saw the level of nest depredation taking place, we added the nest protection component to the program. And modifying plastic milk crates into predator exclusion devices, or PEDs, was an easy and inexpensive way to do this. We got the crates for free, so the only cost for the PEDs was the purchase of wire mess and zip ties to fully protect the terrapin eggs and hatchlings. What we expected to be a periodic survey effort quickly evolved into an annual program to monitor and increase the terrapin population at PAX and in the Patuxent River. And uh, how long has it been going on? Well, we're in the 12th year, and each year we're seeing more success. Without strong nest protection, 90% of all the nests laid would be depredated, which means destroyed by predators. We're encouraged to know that increasing protected nest numbers stem from better training of our volunteers in their nest finding skills. We also know that female terrapins take six to eight years to reach sexual maturity. The protected nests that hatched out during the years 2013 through 2017 can be directly tied to these increased numbers. And what are the results and outcomes? Well, let's talk numbers. When the program began in 2013, we were in a learning phase. We found and marked nests just to have them depredated a few hours later. As we built, mind you, through trial and error, effective PEDs and learned how to successfully install them over a nest, we arrived at 100% nest protection. We went from 32 successful nests in 2013 to 121 in 2023. To date, we've protected over 900 nests and hatched out over 8,000 baby terrapins in the last 11 years. This year's program is on track to be even more successful. With each year, we hire a new SCA intern to lead our volunteers. They learn skills in networking, delegation, instruction, and management, in addition to learning to find, protect, and hatch out the ever-elusive terrapin nests. And how does this project support mission military readiness on your installations? For example, does this project help to delist and reserve, uh, reverse declines of this species in a proactive fashion? Or does it provide training opportunities not available otherwise? Well, it turns out that a large percentage of the terrapins are drawn to nest in a helicopter landing zone that's located within the nesting habitat. So through agreement with our Air Operations Directorate, the Natural Resources Office cleared an alternate landing zone for them to use voluntarily um, during the nesting season. 
the alternate site preparation, including putting in low fencing to keep the terrapins out. Despite the successful cooperation between the Air Operations Mission and the Natural Resources Office, a continued terrapin population decline could result in listing the species under the Endangered Species Act. Our concern is that this could severely limit the Navy's use of this primary and preferred helicopter landing zone. This labor-intensive terrapin nest program increases terrapin nesting success and boosts the population. We're hoping that our efforts can prevent the need to consider listing the terrapin or at least show that PAC's conservation art efforts can work in harmony with its helicopter training and testing, allowing both to occur without impacting the PAC's military operation or the terrapins. And how does this project support the NRIMP and Sykes Act and other applicable species protections slash laws? I see this project as a great example of what our partnerships with external INRMP stakeholders can result in. We knew that terrapins occurred on and around PAC's properties, but we had no idea that there was such a sizable nesting population at the main base. This data enhances the INRMP and, I think, strengthens our relationship with our Fish and Wildlife Service field office. And it's a Sykes Act that allows us to establish the cooperative agreements with SCA. I don't think that this program could still exist without those interns. Are there other stakeholders or benefits beyond the military lands that this uh, was conducted on? Well, Maryland Department of Natural Resources is very interested in our conservation results. Our installation commanding officers have been as well. Over the last few years, we've competed for grant funding to conduct much needed stabilization of the Patuxent River shoreline where the nesting occurs. I'm sure that our nesting data, combined with the need to protect those helicopter landing zones, gave us the edge for two different grant awards and allowed us to fully fund that shoreline protection effort. Another stakeholder is the University of Maryland Chesapeake Biological Laboratory biologist Chris Rowe. He has a vested interest in the northern diamondback terrapins that are nesting on our beaches. Since 2003, he has been studying ecotoxicology and climate change effects on the local populations of terrapins. And describe any challenges you encountered uh, performing the project and how, the, how they were overcame. Well, challenges have many faces, and we have three major ones. We have predators, mother nature, and volunteers. As far as dangers to the nests go, we have traditional predators like fox, raccoon, skunk, river otters, and coyotes. But we also deal with predation from root damage to nest, mole activity, ants, and human curiosity. When extreme tidal conditions are forecasted, we state we stake out any low-lying nests to keep them from washing away. But storms also cause tidal inundation. These nests can't tolerate being submerged in water for long periods of time. And these storms cause long-term damage like shoreline erosion. Extreme heat rounds out Mother Nature's arsenal of weapons. I'll, through better training and communication, we have managed to avoid many of these issues. Our last challenge relies heavily on our awesome volunteers. We occasionally have last minute shift cancellations and shifts are missed. During the nesting season, missing a shift does not have any repercussions. But during hatching season, when it's extremely hot, a missed shift could lead to hatchling mort mortality. When hatchlings surface, they need to be removed from the ped as soon as possible and released into the protective marsh vegetation nearby. They can dehydrate and die if they are left exposed to the sun for too long. It must be noted that this is hard, hot, sweaty, buggy work. And nest hunting is most effective and fruitful when performed quietly, with eyes on the ground, without the distraction of young children. We encourage volunteers to bring their family during hatching season when mama terrapins won't be laying eggs and they won't be getting spooked by loud noises and young energetic feet do not run ahead and erase important terrapin tracks that lead to these well-hidden nests. What is the most exciting or interesting thing you found as a result of this project? <laughs> well, aside from super cute photo ops, I love the volunteers. The number of people who want to be involved is huge. One of the downsides is prior base access is required to participate. I've been hoping to find someone who is interested in emulating our program nearby in St. Mary's or Calvert County. There are miles of ideal terrapin nesting ground along the Patuxent River just waiting to be discovered, patrolled, and protected.